There's still a lot of questions about the response to the January 6th attack on the Capitol, but new emails obtained by Insider show how the Defense Department was gathering information and responding behind the scenes. Deputy Editor David Leventhal joins me. Dave, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks, Mimi. Appreciate you having me. So days after the November 2020 election, Defense Secretary Mark Esper was fired. What was happening during that time inside the Pentagon? From what we know, a lot of chaos, incredible amounts of change and tumult, turbulence that you would expect when in the final few weeks of a presidential administration, you have a department that the top leadership has been uh, shooken up and you have to have a uh, an acting um, <laughs> secretary come in. Uh, there's so many questions and, and also too, of course, you've got to remember the backdrop to all of this, which was that even though the election had been staged, the election had been seemingly uh, concluded in the sense that Joe Biden was becoming president of the United States, Donald Trump was refusing to concede that, in fact, he had lost the election. So take us through the activities at the DOD in the days leading up to the January 6th um, incident. What, was there any preparation going on at, at the Pentagon? So from what we know, including from what we obtained from the 48 pages of records uh, through a uh, Freedom of Information Act lawsuit uh, that we had filed against the Department of Defense, is that there was caution, there was concern about the event that was going to be happening on the National Mall on January 6th that Donald Trump himself was going to be speaking at. But we didn't get any sense that there was overwhelming uh, fear of violence or, or an attack on the U.S. Capitol for sure. So yes, caution, but, but not uh, overriding existential uh, dread that uh, ultimately January 6th would turn into what it ultimately became. The records that you obtained show that Pentagon officials were getting intel from media reports and Twitter. Is that typical? Well, anytime you have a very live situation, you are going to have government agencies that are pulling in information from just about any source that they can possibly get their hands on. Oftentimes that is media reports from the scene, uh, video that you're going to see uh, on television, reports that you're gonna get even on Twitter. And the uh, documents that, that we have obtained indicated that that was very much happening. For example, Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Mark Milley, he was getting intelligence reports via tweets from CNN's Jake Tapper and Manu Raju and Phil Mattingly, uh, among others. And in the very, very early moments of the attack on the Capitol, it was indeed incredibly chaotic, Mimi. And that did not, uh, it was not, uh, for the Department of Defense, they were not immune from that. Uh, they too were experiencing sort of that informational chaos and trying to understand from wherever they could what the heck was going on. So what other sources of information were they relying on besides those media reports? So they were getting uh, updates and we could see almost a, a minute by minute TikTok of what they were learning as they were learning it. It was coming from other agencies such as the Department of Homeland Security, from the Secret Service, other government agencies, in addition to media reports and people from the Department of Defense that uh, they had on the ground. So uh, in essence, they were trying to just find out uh, literally what was happening, how it was happening, who was there, where there were weapons. And it was very intriguing to see too that they were trying to debunk certain rumors uh, in real time. There was a rumor that a plane was going to be flown into the US Capitol. Uh, there were other rumors too of the Proud Boys, the militia organization attempting to uh, disassemble or, or poison the water in Washington, D.C. Of course, these turned out not to be true, but in the fog of the moment, uh, that was some of the information that was coming over the transom and that they were having to respond to and try to understand if, in fact, those threats were real or, or just punk. And so after the Capitol had been breached and shots fired, what was the reaction and response from the Pentagon? Well, we now know from the January 6th hearings that uh, occurred earlier this week on Thursday that uh, that the Department of Defense and uh, members of the military, including uh, General Milley, were surprised, even shocked, that Donald Trump had not personally reached out to them. They were trying to understand what role they needed to play, whether the National Guard was going to be uh, involved, which ultimately they were, but there was, of course, 
quite a delay. So trying to figure out how they needed to react, how they needed to respond and deal with what was uh, clearly by that point at uh, the mid afternoon of January 6th, uh, an unbelievably uh, dangerous and violent situation. So Dave, what other records are you asking for from the DOD and, and what are you expecting to see? So first of all, we expect that we will receive more records as a result uh, of our FOIA lawsuit. Uh, the Department of Defense indicated to us when they gave us the uh, initial responsive records uh, that more would be coming. We have asked for emails, we have asked for documents, memos, basically any communication that was occurring about January 6th from top officials at the Department of Defense. So we won't know what we get until we ultimately get it. That could be weeks, that could be months, but we believe that the public has a right to know what was happening inside the government at that time and that these records are public records indeed. And we wanna be able to uh, report on them and the contents of them to understand truly what was happening in that moment. And briefly, Dave, what would you say was the most surprising thing that you learned from those Pentagon emails? The most surprising thing uh, we, we learned was uh, really that uh, the preparation leading up to January 6th, although mind you, we do not have the full picture, we do not have all the documents, but there, there did seem to just be sort of a, hey, uh, we got this, we can handle this. One of the emails uh, in particular said uh, something to the effect of that uh, the park police uh, for the January 6th event probably can handle this. Of course, it turned out not to be true. All right, Dave, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.